All right, so you guys are probably getting pretty good at this chain rule stuff, so we'll start moving a little faster with our whole U prime situation. I want to point out that, as I pointed out in previous videos, some schools and some classes are just going to do sine and cosine derivatives, and other classes, the you know AP classes and some harder college classes, are going to do all six trig functions. So this video, we're going to start with sine and cosine, but then we'll start doing secants and tangents and stuff in the second half. So feel free to drop out, you know, if you're pretty sure your class never mentions anything besides sine or cosine. All right, once again, we got problems we're going to do before the chain rule and problems we're going to need the chain rule for. The main thing you're looking for when you need the chain rule on trig function is something other than x. So because this is a sine of x, the sine x, cosine x, that kind of stuff, the letter, you know, could only be a single letter all by itself without a number in front in order to be a non-chain rule situation. This 3 didn't matter, but this one does. Sine of 3x, because that 3 is in there with the x, and the sine's been taken of it, so if you would read it out loud and say sine of 3x, that means that 3 is in there with the argument of the function, and therefore we have to use chain rule. So this is going to be a sine u situation, where our u is 3x. Same thing here, we're going to have a u of x squared, so we need the chain rule. That exponent sort of ruined things and made us have to use the chain rule. All right, so let's take a crack. As with all the other chain rule um, situations, chain rule formulas, all we're doing is adding a u prime onto the end. It's like, sure, they changed this x and this x to a u and a u instead, but you may have noticed at this point in calculus, and you'll definitely continue to notice later on, whenever, some, whenever calculus people are talking about u, they always mean like a function of x. u is pretty much always a function of some other letter. So when they say x, they just mean x. When they say u, they mean could be x squared plus 2, could be sine x, could be, cos you know, could be any function of x is sort of being represented by a u. And obviously we have an x here, but a u here, and that's what leads to the chain rule. All right, so the point is we're just going to add a u prime. The derivative will be exactly what you'd think it would be except we're going to add a u prime on the end. All right, basic examples. Derivative of cosine of 3x. So as with all these things, you want to sort of underline your u just to like remind yourself and make it really explicit what your u is. The u is whatever we're taking the cosine of. So since it's the cosine of 3x, that's how it's going to work. So the derivative of cosine is just negative sine of that same thing. Now remember, this is still u, so whatever you had to begin with, you got to finish with. So since we have a 3x here, 3x here, that's always, always, always going to be true. No matter how crazy the thing is, just repeat it right here. Then we have to multiply by u prime. And what is u prime? Well, it's just the derivative of that 3x. So as always, whatever you end up with on the end here, you're probably going to end up wanting to put right there. So you're going to end up rewriting your answer as negative 3 times the sine of 3x. Pretty exciting. You're going to sort of tend to notice that pattern is whatever was in front of the x here ends up going out front. But also staying behind, we still have 3x here. And that's really important to remind you. you know, take, you're just going to end up repeating things a lot. All right, and what's the deal with this one? We're taking the derivative of a sine, which is pretty straightforward as a cosine, but then our u is going to be x squared. But we'll just plug and chug through. Derivative of sine u is just cosine of that same thing, cosine of that same u. So it's going to be cosine of x squared. And then we're going to multiply by u prime, which in this case is 2x. Now, just as like uh, in terms of writing this down, this does not mean cosine of x squared times 2x. It's not derivative of all that, of, uh, it's not cosine of all that stuff. It's more like cosine of x squared and then times 2x. So I, what I like to do is take that 2x term and just put it out front so it's super obvious. We're not taking the cosine of it. And there we go. Looks a lot neater. No way to make a mistake and think that that was now in the argument. All right, nastier one. What's nastier? Well, instead of having x squared, we have a big polynomial, but it's still, you know, chain rule doesn't, it's not really affected by how complicated this thing is. That's still just your u. So derivative of sine is cosine of the same stuff. So x squared minus 2x plus 1 times u prime. And what is the derivative of our u? Well, it's just 2x minus 2. Not so bad, right? And then 
what I like to do is put that stuff out front so it looks better, although this one doesn't look that bad. So 2x minus 2. Oops, probably didn't need that parenthesis right there. Cosine x squared minus 2x plus 1. All right, and we have to put these parentheses here because otherwise it would look like 2x minus 2 times a cosine of blah, blah, blah. But remember, this 2x is also multiplied by the cosine. So we've got to have those parentheses. All right, so that was still a single chain rule loop. Well, let's see what happens here. Derivative of cosine of anything is sine of that same thing. So here's our u. And this one's a little bit worse because we have that x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to rewrite this u as having an x to the negative 2 power. So we'll just rewrite the whole problem as cosine of 3 minus 2 x to the minus 2. So see how I just took that x squared downstairs and made it an x to the minus 2 upstairs? No big deal. That's just going to make it more obvious how to take u, u prime. Oops, that's not a prime. That's just u. All right, so the derivative of cosine is just negative sine of the same stuff. So 3 minus 2x to the minus 2. Then we've got to multiply by u prime. Again, that's a thing you're most likely to forget to do on these problems. So the derivative of u is just going to be, see, the derivative of 3 is nothing. And the derivative of this bad boy is, so we have our negative 2. You know, this negative 2 right here we keep. But then we've got to multiply by the old power, which is also negative 2. Then we keep our x and make it one less power, which is negative 3. All right, I think we're done with that chain rule. Okay, so you can see that th there's a lot of simplification we can do here now. These positives, these negative twos cancel in the positive twos because they both have two negatives. Then those become four. So what we're going to rewrite this as is negative four x to the minus three times the sine of three minus two x to the minus two. So you could leave it like that. Your teacher might want you to just, I don't know, they might say something like no negative exponents or something to kind of force you to rearrange this. So it's going to be negative 4 over x cubed. So I just took that x to the minus 3 and made it an x to the positive 3 downstairs. But then the rest of this is still sine. And then this is going to be my original u, which is 3 minus 2 over x squared. All right. Whichever one of these two forms you prefer is fine. The first one's a little bit easier to get. The second one looks nicer. You know, just depends on what suits your preferences. If your teacher's a real stickler for simplifying everything fully, you gotta start getting an idea of where your teacher's at in terms of what they consider simplified and what's not simplified and how many points are at stake. Because sometimes a simplification can take as long as the original problem took. So if you're only gonna lose one point out of 10 for not simplifying it fully, your time's probably better spent moving on to the next problem than it is you know, doing every little bit of simplification you possibly could to make your teacher happy. So if your teacher's only going to give you half credit if it's not fully simplified, now it's probably worth spending that time to simplify it down. But even then, you've got to figure out what your teacher, like the, what your particular teacher considers awesomely simplified and what's not, because teachers really do vary on what they think looks better. But since these problems are kind of repetitive, you can sort of get you know, as if you keep asking your teacher and keep noticing what your teacher simplifies and what they don't, you'll start to sort of get a sense for what looks good and what doesn't or what's, you know, simplified or not. All right, nested chain rule problem. It's a little bit gnarly, but bear with me. So if we, if we look at the problem right now, we're sort of like, oh, there's definitely a chain rule, right? Because we're taking the sine of something other than x. It's been a sine of x, great, cosine x. But we have this big U here. And that u is, all, is a parenthesis to a power. But hey, the derivative of sine of anything is just cosine of that same thing, right? So it's cosine of x squared minus 2 to the third power. Where this problem is going to get juicy is now I've got to multiply by my u prime. So what's u prime? u prime is going to be the derivative of that big mess we just said, two, x squared minus 2 to the third power, right? So our u prime is going to be the derivative of this nasty u expression. But that u expression itself is also a chain rule problem. Because if, if I just 
if instead of starting with a sine or whatever, I had just given you this problem to start with, wouldn't you be saying to yourself, oh wait, that's a power rule? Because I have something raised to the power of three. So this is already its own chain rule. So let's try it. This one has its own like little u of its own, x squared minus x raised to the third power. So the derivative of something in parentheses to a third power is just gonna be three, the old power, times x squared minus x. Sorry, I, I, I miswrote that. That is supposed to be a two. All right, so we took the three out front. Then we did the same stuff in parentheses. Now we gotta reduce the power. So that becomes a two. And then we got to multiply by u prime within this little guy, right? Because since this is our little u, this is u of this problem, we got to now multiply by the derivative of this little u, which would be 2x. All right, so just if we combine terms here, we get 6x times x squared minus 2 squared. But what was all this? This is just u prime, right? This is, this is just me finding u prime from this problem up here. That's what goes right there after the cosine x squared minus two cubed. So this is now what I'm gonna plug in right there. Six x times x squared minus two squared. So this is the kind of problem that gives the chain rule such a bad reputation. Is that it was, cha it, you know, it was fine that we had to do chain rule initially because we had the sign of something other than just x. So we had to call this our u, you know, everything the sign was of, we had to call our u and we just said, okay, so that's going to be the cosine of that same hunk of junk. But then we got to multiply by u prime. But then because this, it's, because this thing that we were calling u initially was also a chain rule problem in its own right, we had to use the chain rule a second time down here. And we used a chain rule the first time up here. But then just to find chain rule, the u prime, we had to use the chain rule a second time just within this problem. Finding the derivative of the original u required us to use the chain rule again. So I would encourage you, especially when you're first starting out, if u prime is going to take the chain rule, break it out into a separate problem like I did down here. Like work it in a separate spot. And then once you get your answer for what u prime is, then plug it into the original. If, once you get solid at these, like once you do chain rule a million times, and trust me, if you're in calculus, you will do the chain rule a million times, then maybe you won't have to break it down in a second problem like this but just to keep things neat and to help you not mess up and, and forget stuff, it's better if you just break stuff down and you can also number them, like chain rule a second time here, if that helps to keep them straight. But just the real key, and this is where practice is gonna be really important, just keep practicing these things and learn to recognize when it's a sim sort of simple chain rule versus a nested chain rule situation. All right, here we have a nested product rule, not sure there's gonna be a chain rule, let's see what happens. We don't have to know going in how many times we think we'll need a chain rule. We just have to be really careful. When the need arises for the chain rule, got to be careful and, and do it right. So, so far I've just got a sign of some junk. So it looks like I'm just going to call this my u, right? All right, let's see how things go. Maybe we, maybe we only need the chain rule once. Derivative of sine is cosine. And it's, the, it's, it's a cosine of the same stuff. So it's x squared e to the x still. Whatever was behind the sine here is going to be behind the cosine here. And then I got to multiply by u prime. So what's my u prime? Hmm, it's the derivative of x squared times e to the x. Problem, that is a product rule situation. Because we got something times something. Uh-oh. So there's again a situation where I would sort of draw a blank here. Like I literally would draw a blank and say u prime under it. So that to remind myself, oh hey, I'm missing something. And I'm about to go calculate something elsewhere on the page that I'm gonna need to plug in to that spot. So I'm sort of like reserving a spot for it by underlining and labeling it u prime. Because now I can go down here and I can say, hey, what's the derivative of e to, of a x squared times e to the x? Well, let's see, that's a product rule. So I'm gonna label this in v, u and v, and it's a shame in the calculus they always use u and v for everything, because sometimes they'll have a couple of different u's in the same problem like we do here, but you sort of want to keep track of things and realize, oh, so that's u prime v plus v prime u. I'm going to write the product rule different every time. The point is one thing times the derivative of the other, and then the other thing times the derivative of the first thing. So that'll be x squared times the derivative of this, which is e to the x. 
And this time I'm going to keep this. Multiply by the derivative of this, which is... If that didn't make sense to you, definitely go back and check out the power rule, or sorry, the uh, chain rule video. The one without chain rule. These get nastier with the chain rule, and that'll be the next chapter. All right, so here's what we just got for our U prime. So now we plug that in here. Plus e to the x times 2x. Now we could do a little bit of simplification, but there's not much because remember this is cosine of this stuff and that's totally separate. Then we multiply by all this stuff. So it's not like we can go around saying, hey, let's multiply this x squared here times this x squared and get x to the fourth. All these terms, are it's the cosine of that stuff. They're the argument of cosine. So you can't just go in there willy-nilly and multiply stuff in. You're kind of stuck with what you got. All right, so hopefully that appeared nasty to you because that's kind of stuff we're going to have to do a lot. All right, as promised, we're ready for the weird trig functions, the other four trig functions. All right, as with the sine and cosine, it pretty much looks exactly like they've always looked, except we've got this u prime at the end of each one of these, right? So not a big deal. Just don't want to forget the u prime. And of course, you may not have memorized these yet, but you probably will. If you're in a class that needs these, like if you're in an AP class or a college class that uses them, that's probably like most of the classes probably use these, just some don't. But the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Just basically anything with a co in front of it seems to end up with a negative sign on the right side. You may recall that the derivative of cosine is negative sine u. So times u prime. But the point is the negatives, whenever you take the derivative of something that starts with c, like cosine, cosecant, cotangent, you always end up with a minus sign on the right side of the equation. And that's how I remember it. And hopefully that, I mean, that should help you. It seems pretty straightforward that the cofunctions derivatives are going to have a negative on the right side. Other than that, though, they're just, you know, they're time consuming. Secant goes to secant times tangent, which is weird. Secant is like its own derivative, kind of, except you add a tangent on the end. Wacky stuff. Just don't forget that u prime. That's a killer. You'll notice that no matter how wacky u is, even if it was x squared plus 2 or whatever, some wacky polynomial because we're in the chain rule, that same wacky, wacky polynomial is going to go in each one of these u's. So that's why these can also get really long, complicated looking answers. All right, so here's a couple of very, fairly straightforward ones. This is a chain rule problem. Even though it looks pretty simple, that pi in front of the theta makes it a chain rule problem. We could take the derivative of tangent theta before, but not tangent of a number times theta. Pi, though, is just a number, so don't worry about this being a product rule or something. It's just, we're going to plug and chug. So, what is our u? Just pi times theta, right? Derivative tangent of u is secant u, that same u, so pi times theta. And then we've got to multiply by u prime, which it turns out is not so bad. This is a theta to the first power, so the derivative of a number times a letter is just that same number, so pi. And then just to make the oops, secant squared, and then just to make this look better, I'll move the pi out front. So we'll get pi secant squared pi theta. Now whether to put these parentheses right here, that's really a judgment call. Sometimes I'll put them around it just if I feel like it's a little bit risky that you won't, you know, I won't be able to tell what the sign is of and what it's not, that kind of thing. So cosecant, same deal. And because it's cosecant, I'm thinking to myself right away, got to have a negative sign. So I might even do that the second I second I see something starts with C, just drop in the negative sign so I don't forget it. Our U is obviously just a 5x. So the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant times a cotangent. It's a cosecant of the same U. So since we have a 5x here, we're going to have a 5x here. Then we got our cotangent, 5x also. And now we multiply it by U prime, which is just the derivative of 5x. So that is just 5. Now it's real important to notice this 5 is not times the 5x. This is its own deal. So that's why I might put parentheses around that. And now just to make it look better, I'll move that 5 out front. So we'll get negative 5, cosecant 5x, cotangent 5x. All right. Good stuff. Not crazy complicated, but not super easy. All right, a couple more not too bad ones. 
Now we're just putting a polynomial in there, but again, not the end of the world. Sort of basic chain rule. So we'll call this u, as we always do. What's the derivative of tangent? Well, it's the secant squared of the same stuff. So x squared plus pi. And then, of course, as usual, the thing we do not want to forget is u prime. So u prime is just derivative of the stuff in the parentheses here, which is going to be 2x. And once again, pi is just a number. So if you had had a 3 right here, derivative of 3 is 0. Pi is just a number. It's 3.14 or something. So its derivative is also 0. And that's why the derivative of this whole thing is actually just the derivative of the x squared, which is 2x. And once again, I prefer to put whatever is multiplied in this whole you know, u prime, basically, I prefer to put out front. Just looks better to me. So secant squared of x squared plus pi. All right, so that one wasn't too bad. Let's take a look at the cosecant. Once again, cosecant starts with a c, drop a negative sign out front. So what's uh, my u is right here. Hmm, this might be a little bit nastier than the last one. Let's take a look. So first of all, derivative of cosecant of something is cosecant cotangent that same thing. So cosecant of 2 minus x cubed, and then uh, cotangent, same thing, 2 minus x cubed. Then i got to multiply by u prime, right? Now why did I just draw a blank and put a u prime under it? Because it turns out this u is not that easy to find. This is the power rule. This thing right here, find, trying to find the derivative of 2, so d over dx, the derivative of 2 minus x cubed, is actually a power rule all by itself, because we have something raised to a power, right? We have a little u raised to a power, so not to get our u's confused or anything, but let's just take the derivative real quick of 2 minus x cubed. That's going to be 3 times 2 minus x squared and then we got to multiply by u prime for this, just this, within this problem, just its little u prime. So since this was sort of like the little u of this little chain rule problem, the derivative of that 2 minus x is just negative 1. So if I simplify this together, I get negative 3 times 2 minus x squared. All right, so that means I got to put my, so that's what goes up here. So you got negative 3 times 2 minus x, oops, apologize, it's probably off the page, 2 minus x squared. Point is, though, I just took this stuff, and I'm just plugging it into that blank I made. All right, so now let's just take all this and bring it down here for where we have a little bit of space. So in total, I've got a cosecant, I've got a cotangent, and I've got a negative 3 times 2x squared and stuff. So I'm going to move that negative 3 out front. So you got negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Then this 2 minus x squared right here, I'm going to move that out front also. And then I've got cosecant 2 minus x squared times cotangent of 2 minus x squared. Wow. What a mess. So that turned out to be a nested chain rule problem. So why was that a nested chain rule? And how do you spot them in the future? Well, you, know, you saw right off the bat, it was a cosecant of something, right? So that something we called our u. But then because there's a u prime, every time you take the derivative of something with u in it, you end up with that u prime on the end. But then just looking at this, and you can, you can figure this out before you even start the problem, you can look at this and say, uh-oh, when I find u prime, this thing right here is its own little power rule problem. And that, so I'm going to have to use chain rule on just, just to find u prime, I'm going to have to use the chain rule on just that little power rule situation. So that's how to spot them ahead of time. Not saying it's easy necessarily, but that's how you do it. All right, so once again, all right, this one's crazy because it looks like it's a straight up um, secant problem. Because usually if you walk up to this thing, the first thing you'd say is like, oh man, it's a secant, I hate those. But it's actually not a secant problem off the bat. That's actually going to be the second step. The first step is to realize that this is a power rule problem. This is really 2 times the secant of x squared to the fifth power. Because remember, a 5 just over the shoulder of a secant really means take this whole thing to the fifth power. It's kind of tricky that way, the reason they put, they put that 5 there. 
So this is really the problem we're working. And we could almost just cross this out right now because this looks better. This is more accurate to what's going on. So now if you look at it this way, doesn't it look an awful lot like secant x squared is our u? And that's all being raised to the fifth power. Hopefully it does because that is in fact what's happening. All right, so man, now you can see this is kind of a toughie. So first we'll do the chain rule once. It's a power rule on the secant x squared to the fifth power. So we're just going to do the power rule to start with. We're going to need the chain rule again for the secant x squared stuff inside, so you'll see what happens. So this 2 out front, we'll just keep. Then for the power rule, we take the same thing, so secant x squared. And we just reduce the power by 1, so that 5, take away 1 from that, and we get 4. Scribble that out because I don't want to confuse me later. So I just reduce the power by 1. Now i got to multiply by the derivative by u prime, right? But what is u prime? Well, it's a derivative of all this stuff, which is my u. All right, so what's the derivative of secant of x squared? Well, let's see. Derivative of secant is, tan is um, secant x squared tangent x squared. We have to keep, since this was secant of x squared, we have to keep an x squared here and here, right? We've got to use the same argument or the same thing behind the secants. So secant x squared, its derivative is secant times tangent, also both of x squared. But then there's also, this itself is a power problem, is a um, chain rule problem. Because if you want to take the derivative of secant of x squared, it's really secant of u, where u is x squared, if that makes sense. So the derivative of secant x squared is secant, it's that same stuff I just wrote, secant x squared tangent of x squared. But then it's also, you've got to multiply by u prime for just this little problem. So this is the u of just the second stage of the chain rule. So what's the derivative of x squared? 2x. All right, so when we, so when we put secant squared tan squared x right here, what we forgot, or what we need because of the nested chain rule, is another 2x. Because you can't just willy-nilly take the derivative of secant x squared without multiplying it also by 2x. So at this point, we've got our entire answer. But are we done? Tough call. I see a 2x out back and a 2 out front. So those could be combined. Okay, I'm going to do that. All right, so my total answer, I got a 2 times a 2x is 4x. Then I got a secant x squared to the fourth power. I also have a secant x squared to the no power at all, so the first power. So that's a total of secant to the fifth power of x squared. So that gets rid of those two. And I have a tan x squared. And I think that is the final answer. If you get something different, email me. I have a 90% confidence interval. Is this correct? All right, so there we go. That was gnarly. But as you can see, we had to do the chain rule multiple times. And just looking back at the original problem, again, we should sort of be able to look. We, you know, you want to get in the habit of looking ahead and saying, well, gosh, this is a power rule because it's something to the fifth power. But the something that's to the fifth power is a trig function of something other than x. And of course, anytime you're t taking a derivative of something, of a trig function with anything other than x, that's going to be a chain rule problem in and of itself. So that's how we ended up with the nested or double chain rule situation, where you had to do the one, then the other. All right, this one's crazy nasty. This is the last one we're going to do. If you don't have the worst teacher in the world, if I were you, I would stop watching this video. I'm going to try and plow through this thing anyway. So feel free to suffer along with me if you like. All right, so the first thing we're going to see is we got this big old root over everything, right? So by now, you should be in the habit of any time you see a root, turn into a fraction, fraction exponent. So secant of 4x squared plus pi all to the 1 half power. All right, so it's pretty obvious we got a power rule situation first because sort of like the outside set of parentheses, but the, you know, the big thing is this power rule. All that, you know, that secant is really nasty looking, and we know we need the chain rule for that to take its derivative. 
But first, we got to take care of the power situation. So stage one of this problem is going to be to do a power rule on the overall deal. So it's going to be one half times the same stuff, only to a smaller exponent. So it's still going to be secant of 4x squared plus pi. But now to the negative 1 half power. And remember, this was our u. So now we need something to put in for u prime. Except, what's our u prime? Well, gosh, just looking at this, if I try and take my u prime of secant of 4x squared plus pi, that's a mess. I better do a second stage of chain rule where I'm just taking the derivative of secant of, uh, so this is my u prime down here I'm calculating, of secant of 4x squared plus pi. All right, so what's the derivative of the secant of all this junk? Derivative of secant is secant of the same junk times tangent of the same junk times the derivative of the junk. Because this is kind of like a u within its own mini chain problem. The derivative of that is going to be 8x. And remember, derivative of pi is just 0 because it's a constant. All right, so all this stuff is my u prime. So that goes in right here. So I get, I might as well put the 8x, well, what the heck, I'll just copy it. Secant of 4x squared plus pi times tangent of 4x squared plus pi times 8x. All right, so now I have a huge mess. I mean, literally, this problem, this answer, goes from one edge of the paper to the other edge of the paper. That's crazy. There's not a lot I can do here to simplify this thing. Oh my gosh, there is. Bummer. Okay, so the 8x right here and the 1 half out front can be combined. I'll just multiply 1 half times 8x and I'll get 4x. And then, now here's what's crazy. I have the secant of 4x squared plus pi, and I have the secant of 4x squared plus pi right here as well. The power of this first one is negative 1 half. The power of this one, since there is no power, you can sort of just realize, oh, that's a power of 1. So what happens when you multiply, when you have the same thing, the same two bases, or the same base raised to two different exponents? You just add them together, right? So since there's a secant to the negative 1 half times the secant to the first power, that ends up combining to be the secant of 1 plus negative 1 half, which is just 1 half, of the same stuff, 4x squared plus pi. All right, so that combined this crazy mess with this crazy mess. The only thing left is my tan of the same crazy stuff. Holy smokies. That was super gnarly. All right, but that's what happens. When you get trig functions and you start nesting stuff, that's when you have to do the chain rule. Just to find your u prime from the first chain rule, you have to do the chain rule again. So it's just part of the practice on these, and the reason you want to practice is you want to get really good at spotting, you know, plug and chug in a very straightforward way. And then if you realize you're going to need chain rule again, just leave a blank and label it u prime so that when you're off working the chain rule separately, for that u prime problem, once you get your u prime, you want to remember where to plug it back in. Because that's where I find students get the most confused on these crazy chain rule problems. It's just getting lost in the maze. You know, it's like those Russian dolls where you have a small doll inside of a doll, inside of a doll. It's sort of like nested parentheses or nested Russian dolls. And once you get in a couple of levels, you start losing track of which way is up. You don't remember if you're on the first level or the third level. Same thing when you're entering um, parentheses on your calculator. It's like once you start doing a few sets of parentheses, you have a, you know, it's like you really have to backtrack to figure out, oh man, do I need another parenthesis or two more closing parentheses? It just gets confusing once you get in all these different layers and start peeling the onion. And that's why I need practice, and that's why I need to write it super neat and just keep track and always do it the same way every time. All right, so sorry about the super long trig video, but um, you know, the chain rule's nasty, let's face it.